The Devil's Grandmother, a tale from the Grimm Brothers collection. There was a great war, and the king had many soldiers, but he gave them a small pay, so small that they could not live on it, so three of them agreed among themselves to desert. One of them said to the others, If we are caught, we will be hanged. How shall we manage this? Another said, Look, do you see that great cornfield? If we hide in there, no one could find us. The troops are not allowed to enter it, and tomorrow they are to march away. They agreed this was the best plan, and they crept into the corn. But the troops did not march away, but remained lying all about it. They stayed in the corn for two days and two nights, and they were so hungry that they feared they would die. But if they left, death would be certain. Then they said, What is the use of our deserting if we are to perish miserably here? Just then a fiery dragon came flying through the air, and it came down to them and asked why they had concealed themselves there. They answered, we are three soldiers who have deserted because the pay was so bad, and now we are going to die of hunger if we stay here, and we are going to be hung if we go out. If you will serve me seven years, said the dragon, I will convey you through the army so that no one can seize you. Well, we have no choice. We are compelled to accept your offer, they replied. Then the dragon got hold of them with his claws and carried them away through the air over the army and put them down again on the earth far from it. But the dragon was none other than the devil. He gave them a small whip and he said, Whip with it and crack it, and then as much gold as you want will spring up about you. Then you can live like great lords. You can keep horses and drive your carriages. But... When the seven years have come to an end, you are my property. Then he put before them a book, which they were all forced to sign. I will, however, set you a riddle, he said, and if you can guess the answer, you shall be free and released from my power. Then the dragon flew away, and they went about with their whip, and they had gold aplenty. They ordered for themselves rich apparel and traveled all about the world. Wherever they went, they lived in pleasure and magnificence. They rode on horsebacks, drove in carriages, ate and drank, but did nothing wicked. The time slipped quickly by, and when the seven years were coming to an end, two of them were terribly anxious, but the third was not alarmed. He said, Brothers, fear nothing. My head is sharp enough. I shall guess the riddle. They went out to the open country and sat down. Then an aged woman came up to them, who inquired why they were so sad. Alas, they said, how can that concern you? After all, you cannot help us. Who knows, she said. Confide your troubles to me. So they told her that they had been servants of the devil for nearly seven years, and that he had provided them with gold aplenty, just as if gold were blackberries. But they had sold themselves to him, and they were forfeit to him, if at the end of seven years they could not guess the answer to a riddle. The old woman said, If you are to be saved, one of you must go into the forest. Then he will come to a fallen rock, which looks like a little house. He must enter that, and then he will obtain help. The two melancholy ones thought to themselves, That will not save us, and they stayed where they were. But the third, the merry one, got up and walked into the forest until he found the rock house. In the little house, however, a very aged woman was sitting. She was the devil's grandmother. She asked the soldier where he had come from and what he wanted there. He told her everything, and he so pleased her that she took pity on him and said that she would help him. She lifted up a great stone which lay above a cellar. She told him, Conceal thyself there. There thou can hear everything that is said. But be still. Do not stir. When the dragon comes, I will question him about the riddle. He tells everything to me. So listen carefully for his answer. At twelve o'clock that night, the dragon came thither and asked for his dinner. The grandmother laid the table with food and drink, so he was well pleased, and they ate and drank together. 
In the course of the conversation, she asked him what kind of day he had had and how many souls he had gotten. Oh, nothing went well today, he answered, but I have laid hold of three soldiers and I have them safe. Indeed, three soldiers? That is quite a catch, but they may escape you yet. The devil said mockingly, Ha! They are mine. I will set them a riddle which they will never in this world be able to guess. What riddle is that? she inquired. Well, I can tell you, he said. In the great North Sea lies a dead dogfish. That shall be your roast meat. In the rib of a whale shall be your silver spoons. In a hollow old horse's hoof shall be your wine glass. When the devil had gone to bed, the old grandmother raised up the stone and let out the soldier. Hast thou paid particular attention to everything that was said? Yes, said he. I know enough, and I will contrive to save myself. Then he had to go back another way, through the windows, secretly, and with all speed to his companions. He told them how the devil had been tricked by his own grandmother, and how he had learned the answer to the riddle. They were all joyous and of such good cheer, and they took the whip, and they whipped so much gold that it was all over the ground. When the seven years had gone by, the devil came back and brought his book with them, and he showed them where they had signed. He said, Now I will take you with me to hell. There you shall have a meal. If you can guess what kind of roast meat you will have to eat, you shall be free and released from your bargain, and then you may keep the whip as well. Then the first soldier began, and he said, In the North Sea lies a dead dogfish. There is no doubt that that is the roast meat. The devil was very angry, and he muttered to himself. Then he turned to the second. But what will your spoon be? The rib of a whale. The devil frowned and growled to himself, and he turned to the third. Do you also know what your wine glass will be? An old horse's hoof is to be our wine glass. Then the devil flew away with a loud cry, and he had no more power over them. But the three kept the whip, and they whipped as much money for themselves as they wanted, and they lived happily to their end.